Hey everyone, it's Ross, and today I just want to take you guys around the garden. Take you guys around the orchard here, show you guys what's going on. Um, you can see on my left, we've planted a whole bunch of garlic in the fall. These are different varieties here, some we've grown last year, some from uh, my buddy at, at, I met at the Staten Island Fig Festival, Gary. We've got all kinds of garlic coming up. We planted this garlic, believe it or not, at very different times of the year. Um, this stuff here, we planted as early as, I think, August, which is incredible to think about. Um, I really experimented this year with the appropriate timings that I should be planting my garlic here in my location. Um, I know it's in the books, it's all out there, but why not experiment? You can see this is some garlic we planted very late, and it's just now kind of coming up. Some of them are just now sprouting. You can see one over here that's really not that far along at all. But it all made it through the wintertime. I'm surprised to see all of it so resilient, even though we planted it very late. And then this is the earliest over here, and this stuff doesn't look very good. We actually planted more in this location, but a groundhog, I believe, dug some of it up. But you can see this actually looks pretty decent. And what I'm doing right now is actually moving away a lot of this mulch. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because I kind of want the soil to warm up in, the, in these locations. Give these garlics here, you know, keep keep getting them some more energy here, more heat. It's gonna really kickstart them into gear. You know, now that the soil temperatures are warming up, you can see they're all starting to put out new leaves. These here were planted, I believe, sometime maybe even August 15th or something like that. You can see how thick the stems already are. It's really impressive. Um, we're really now at March 15th. Things really are not going to get much colder we're not gonna have too much crazy more temperatures these we planted sometime in uh, I think September 1st maybe even September 15th as we go down the row it gets later in the year so I think it's August 1st August 15th um, September 1st September 15th October 1st and then October 15th which, yeah, I think that's exactly right. And I wanted to see, based on that, I know there's different varieties in here, right? They're gonna have different genetics. But I really did wanna see what the result would be based off of the planting date, if I could come to any conclusions. We have also have lots and lots of shallots coming up. Let me get out of the the sun there for you guys. You can see the shallots are coming up here. Um, and here as well, looks like this one it came up prematurely but got hit by the cold. But it looks like it's gonna send up more, more shoots. You can see them here, here. Even this guy, we planted a row of elephant garlic. They're all coming up. And they made it all through the winter time. I'm a bit shocked because we planted a lot of this very late. And I was really worried, and I wasn't sure what would happen. Um, this elephant garlic here actually is pretty mushy, and I can't believe this thing's even together anymore. That it's even still sprouting and growing. So I'm really just, I can't believe how resilient some of this stuff is. But so far it looks like, just from the germination rate and the size, it looks like August 15th is a really great date to be planting these. I wanted to see just how early I could get away with it, right? Because if you live in a, a colder place, you wanna plant you want to plant these things later in the uh, season because if they get too big and then a frost comes in that's really bad, the garlic will just not survive. But if they're smaller, kind of like this size here or even this size, they'll have no problem pulling through the wintertime. But I wanted to see if it was maybe this location or the fact that we mulched some things. Um, I really wanted to find out from my 
specific location what would work and what wouldn't work and how early I could get away with it, right? Like this one here was even planted very early. And look at the size of this one. Um, actually, this one, I'm sorry, was planted late and look at the size of this one. So I don't know, maybe this is too preliminary to say. But I'm really liking the way the garlic looks sometime around April 15th, or I'm sorry, August 15th, September 1st. This stuff here is looking like, uh, it's got some nice size to it, but a lot of them didn't end up coming up. And I think part of that is because of rot. You know, this one looks like here, it, it died back. This also is just a different variety. I think this may be the soft neck that I planted and I planted the soft necks a bit late. So I don't really know. We also have some in the front of the house. We've got alliums everywhere. I'm so in love with the alliums. We even overwintered uh, some leeks back in here underneath the, uh, the peaches. These leeks didn't really grow all that much last year. And instead of just harvesting them all, I said, you know what, let's let them sit in the ground and see what happens. I bet you these guys go to flower this year but at least they'll get some size on them before I harvest. We've also got tons of, tons of shallots that we planted in here. And if I'm not mistaken, look, here's more shallots. We've got all different types of shallots this year. I really went nuts. My friend Brian in Louisiana gave me some shallots. We got all different types of varieties, some French ones, some red ones, some huge ones, some yellow Dutch shallots. Um, really just went nuts. Look at these. These are my the ones that my friend Brian sent me um, actually sometime in August, I think. And we planted these out in August in hopes that they would ripen up in time um, before the frost. But then I got a little worried because I was like, all right, well, are these guys going to survive the wintertime? Turns out they did. So Brian, I'm going to have all kinds of crazy shallots this year from your shallots. This is really the Cajun style of cooking, as Brian likes to put it, in Louisiana. This is really the stuff that they love to cook with, the shallots. And I completely agree, I love shallots. I've cooked with shallots myself. I love cooking with alliums in general. I can't cook without alliums. Um, you've got, you gotta have either citrus, alliums, tomatoes, some kind of acidity in the cooking, otherwise it just doesn't taste nearly as good. You got the Egyptian walking onions coming up here. Um, there's even some chives that we planted last year that are now coming up, finally. But I've had so many chives in the house because there's wild chives. Here's one that we dug up. This is a wild chive. And these wild chives are all over the property. We talked about this last year. They're very easy to spot because they look like a clump of grass. This is them. And I could break this off and eat it. It's got that onion flavor in it. It's quite good. What I did was I chopped all these off last year. You can see some over here. And I put these in a, a bag and put them in the freezer. And I've had chives all year because of this. So, believe it or not, chives are growing in your backyard in most areas of the United States. Whether or not you like to believe it or not, I don't know why we buy them. I don't even know why we cultivate them. But, uh, you know, <laughs> I am cultivating them. I did plant some seeds. But to be honest with you, uh, if these don't really fill in all that much, I'm not really gonna worry about them. You know, I may not even harvest them this year. Uh, we've got also some other Egyptian walking onions I've planted and try to really increase the density here of the walking onions. We planted some carrots a bit late and these guys are not doing anything. Uh, what's gonna end up happening with these is that these carrots, first off, may not even continue to grow, but if they do, they're gonna go to flower. And, um, even though they got through the entirety of the winter time like this in the state, it really isn't uh, enough time. I need to give them a warmer season, maybe even a better 
planting zone if I'm gonna do this. I do wanna show you guys my carrots over here. And these carrots have been sitting here. If you saw this in the beginning of the video, these have been here all winter time. And every time I wanna come out here for a snack, I dig through this little patch of carrots and pull up myself some carrots. And these have been in this basically a refrigerator all winter time. And these are basically carrots that I heavily seeded. I heavily seeded this area with carrots. Um, I've been harvesting them realistically probably since uh, this particular patch here since July. And because I've overseeded them, I only took out the really big ones. They are a bit difficult to get out of the ground, depending on how big they are. But I've literally been storing them here since July, so we'll get in some nice little uh, some carrot seeds again, overseed it really well, and I'll just come in here all throughout the year. I mean, the carrots continuously grow. I could plant carrot seeds probably now uh, because they are growing. You can see that there. There's new growth on these carrots, regardless of even if I pick them. Um, you know, lots of things are growing. So that, that's a sign that I can grow or start growing lots of things. Um, something else I found a bit interesting. I'm probably going to dig up all of these and eat them really when I'm done filming because I haven't had anything to eat today. But this is a nice little weed that really likes to take over. I forget the name of it. This thing grows throughout the entirety of the winter time. Whatever this is, it just continues to grow. Maybe in like February or even parts of January, it doesn't grow. But this thing started out as nothing at the beginning of the season when I ripped out all these plants. You know, all the annuals, we took them all out of here. I, some of the weeds were left here. I never took care of them. And they've just grown like crazy. And it's just amazing that this particular weed here is able to absolutely just go nuts um, throughout the entirety of the winter. And now it's flowering. So any of the bees that are in the area, I think this is a weed that I'm actually going to leave here. Believe it or not, I'm going to leave a weed here because I'm not using this bed really. I could, and maybe I will. I'll plant maybe some really early stuff in this bed, stuff that doesn't take very long. Um, and then that way when I come in here sometime around mid-May and plant out all the heat-loving crops, I can maybe get a nice little set of cool-loving crops before I put in the heat-loving crops. And this here, I'll just leave this because this is gonna help out the bees. This is the first thing literally on the property that is flowering. So why get rid of this? If they're flowering even before the maple trees, that's historically really what's the earliest. I believe that right there is a maple. Um, don't quote me on that. But uh, yeah, pretty damn important. So yeah, that's kind of the video too, is we got tons of alliums, tons of things really growing here that uh, you wouldn't think are growing and it's only mid-March. Mid um, I really was hoping that this lavender would pull through, but I'm not entirely sure if it's still alive. Could be. But, you know, doing the scratch tests and some of this stuff doesn't look very promising. Um, we've also got on this side the rosemary. And the rosemary was looking good up until really not that long ago. It got through 2 degrees Fahrenheit. At least by the looks of it, it got through two degrees Fahrenheit. This is a hardier variety called ARP, A-R-P. And that's supposed to withstand it, but it looks a bit bad. I would say up until that two degree low, this thing was fully green. And I could come out here and harvest any rosemary that I wanted. Um, so who knows if this one will pull through, but it would be really nice to finally get a rosemary to survive the winter time and not have to propagate it every year. But other than that, that's kind of the little update I wanted to give you guys.
All right, so hopefully you guys stuck with me at this point, and uh, I'll catch y'all later. Right? Uh, please like this one if you if you did like it. Um, also, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, guys. There's a whole bunch of different content that goes up on there. Um, also, we have the new website, rossratty.wixsite.com slash blog, all in the description of the videos that I do. So, you know, go over there and check those things out. The blog is totally different than the social media, and all of it's really very different than the video. So, if you want more content, check me out there. All right, everyone, take care, and I'll catch you all soon. All right, see you tomorrow's video.